Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, Quick Hitter Edition. We're going to go to Boston right now, um, and I'm going to talk about Vinny the Animal Ferrara, the OG New England mafia figure, uh, capo of the North End back in the 80s, went to prison for about 15 years, came out. According to the FBI today, uh, as well as the Massachusetts State Police, Vinny Ferrara is a crew boss now in Norfolk County. He runs, uh, according to them, he runs the rackets in Norfolk County, no longer based out of the North End, although I know that he owns quite a bit of real estate and has business interests all across the North End, and which has made him uh, a multimillionaire you know, 10 times over legitimately. Uh, the reason I want to talk about Vinny the Animal, not just because he's a, a legend of the East Coast underworld and has a legacy that even if he does nothing else from today forward, people will be talking about uh, Vinny Ferrara for, for decades just because he he had such a you know imprint and an impact uh, in, in the 80s when he was a relatively young man. He, you know, this is a guy that was college educated, has a business degree from Boston College. Um, was known as a big time earner, but was also known as as quite the tough guy and looked to be on the fast track to becoming boss of that whole family before he got um, arrested and, and put in prison. I, on the Gangster Report, which is our companion uh, publication online, our web magazine, I'm doing a series called Historic Mafia Sit Downs. Uh, and Vinny the Animal's name came up in, in one of the more recent Editions of that, go check it out at www.gangsterreport.com. Um, and I'm going to tell the story of that sit down right now. And, you know, we'll see if, if this uh, video gets some traction. And uh, if it does, I'll, I'll roll out some more uh, videos that uh, accompany these historic mafia sit down articles. So the article I wrote in this past week that involves Vinny the animal and his kind of most iconic sit down um, would be related to the murder of Jimmy Lamoli. Took place in 1985, the murder, uh, and the sit down took place a couple weeks before that. Uh, Jimmy Lamoli was a protege of Vinny the Animal, was a driver, bodyguard, um, someone that thought that Vinny was going to uh, propose him for, for membership for a button into the patriarchal crime family. Ferrara was initially convicted of ordering Lamoli's murder and was supposed to do uh, pretty much the rest of his life in prison. In the about 10, 15 years into his sentence, it came out that there was prosecutorial misconduct in that conviction and it was tossed. So although he was initially convicted of it, he is now kind of free of that responsibility. But I'll, I'll kind of lay out the story and you guys can um, make your own judgment. Um, Lamoli was a friend, uh, mob running buddy of another young. Uh, they, they were both twenty five at that time. I think Vinny was um, in his in his late thirties. But uh, Jimmy Lamoli was running around with Frankie Boy Salemi Jr., who was you know the mafia prince. The dad was Cadillac Frank, who at that time was finishing up a prison sentence and would come would come out and, and take over the family in the nineties. You can see Frankie Boy. Walking out of uh, out of a of the Busy Bee uh, Cafe in Brookline, Massachusetts, which was Frank Cadillac Frank Salemi's headquarters. This is a uh, what we're looking at right now is a, is a surveillance photo, I think, from 1991. Uh, and Frankie Boy Salemi is in the uh, Sergio Tacchini tracksuit, uh, carrying it looks like a gym bag. Uh, Frankie Boy Salemi was just as explosive as his dad. Um, had a epic temper, but didn't have anywhere near the charisma or the 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 slick politician mover and shaker that his dad was. I mean, his dad was a lightning rod, uh, but there were equally as many people that loved him as hated him. Frankie Boy just had a lot of people that hated him um, and really rode his dad's name. And was able to, frankly, avoid being killed in this whole Jimmy Lamoli incident, um, partially because of who who he who, who he was related to. So Jimmy Lamoli and Frankie Boy Salemi, throughout 84, 1985, uh, were living together 
sharing sharing an apartment because they were both dating sisters. So the, it was the sister's apartment, but they would both be over there the majority of their time, uh, each dating one of the sisters. Uh, during this time, they became known for running drug ripoff scams where they would set up a deal and either steal the drugs without giving them money or tell someone they were going to give them a, a package of drugs like marijuana or cocaine. And in fact, it was like peat moss or sugar. Um, and they took the money and, and ran. This got them in quite a bit of you know trouble over the years, but they were always able to kind of wiggle out of it because of Frankie Boy's dad or because of uh, Jimmy Lamoli's ties to Vinny the Animal. At some point in 1985, Salemi and, I should say, Salemi Jr. and Jimmy Lamoli get into some feud over a drug ripoff that they were going to run on somebody else. Um, and Lamoli feels like he was cheated out of money from the ripoff. And they start feuding. And at some point in 1985, Lamoli steals $100,000 worth of cocaine that he thinks belongs to Frankie Jr., but in reality, it belongs to East Boston future capo. At that time, I believe he was a soldier, Spucky Spagnola. Um, this causes quite the problem. Uh, Lamoli claims that he didn't actually steal the drugs. He doesn't know what people are talking about. Frankie Salemi Jr. is trying to save his ass because he was hiding that cocaine for, for Spagnolo. Spagnolo might think, hey, did did you have something to do with this? And he's saying that it had nothing to do with me. This was Jimmy. Um, and a series of sit downs uh, can, you know, jump off after this. Uh, and what's also interesting about this story is that because Frank Salemi Jr. and another future boss of the Patriarchas, Peter Doc Lamoni, they were in state prison at this time. And in Massachusetts, state prisons during that era had furloughs so they could leave prison for the weekend and in 1985 when these sit downs were taking place both Cadillac Frank Salemi and Pete Lamoni were on furloughs from their prison sentences and holding these sit downs the final sit down took for the, the kind of the famous historic sit down that I write about took place in an alley uh in the north end be, behind a restaurant and a social club by eight or nine people there uh including Spagnolo Vinny the Animal, Frank Jr., Frank Sr., um, Spucky, as well as some other elders. I know that I think Danny Angelo was involved. Sammy Granito was involved. These are, you know, OGs that uh, that were, were elderly at that point. Lamoli continued to deny, deny, deny. Eventually, they were able to get receipts from one of the, the, uh, the girlfriends at the one of the sisters at the house came to, I believe, uh, uh, Vinny the Animal and, and Frank Sr. and told them that, he, that she had seen um, Lamoli steal the $100,000 in drugs. Lamoli eventually cops to it, is told that all is forgiven. He just has to pay the money back. That's not true. Uh, he's uh, drawn out to um, what's purported to be another drug scam by his own guys, uh, Patsy Barone, uh, Walter Fats Jordan, who were uh, another couple of his guys that he ran around with. In reality, it was like he was trying to scam. He was trying to, in this situation, scam his own guys. Um, they killed him, allegedly. They've both been, the, the case has been tossed now. But according to the first uh, case, uh, Barone and, and Fats Jordan killed him. And then after they killed him, they grabbed the bag that he had on his hand that was supposed to be part of this drug deal, which was supposed to have either drugs or money in it. And they just found a bunch of napkins. So he was trying to, to screw them. And, and according to witness testimony, I believe Patsy Barone was so angered by this that he went back to the body allegedly after he had allegedly shot it and unloaded another clip into him while screaming at Jimmy Lamoli. Why, Jimmy, why, is what he was alleged to have said. Walter Jordan, who was the uh, uh, driver and bodyguard, he eventually cooperated, um, and that's how they brought the case. But then he recanted some of his cooperation testimony, which is how Barone and, and Ferrara got free of that case. But 
Uh, Vinny the Animal is still around. It's been out of prison since 05, 06. There was rumors that he retired. I, I would say it's either semi-retirement or no retirement at all. It came out a couple years ago that the state police were investigating him, um, and they believe that he is running Norfolk County right now for the Denunzio brothers and Spucky Spagnolo, who is uh, kind of half acting boss with Little Cheese Denunzio and conciliary and, and you know controls East Boston and, and some of Revere. Um, Let's see if you guys like this, these these stories and kind of updates on what's going on today with some of these guys that were players back in the 70s and 80s and, and are still around as OGs today. Please like, subscribe, and share if uh, you're a fan of the OG pod. Tell the world uh, we love bringing you uh, the latest breaking news when it comes to North American gangland, uncovering the underworld here at the OG pod every day. Scott Bernstein, OG pod. I'm out. Mm -hmm.